Hello, internet friends! My name is Bay, and welcome to a little talking head discussion update video about the changes recently made to the Enhancement Shaman in Patch 725, and there was a lot of them. So joining me in this discussion is WordUp, who you may or may not know from places on the internet and Google Documents. Welcome, sir. I'm back, and uh, so are you, I guess, to talk about our spec again. Hopefully, better this time after the last patch. Yeah, we at least it looks that way. We, I'm really hopeful. We've we've been here before. We were actually we were setting up for this way back in the Legion Alpha, November 2015. Word up and I waxed lyrically about enhancement shamans for really half an hour, and a few things have changed since then, wouldn't you say? I mean, looking through that old video and that old document, there's some pretty old things in there. Yeah, so it's. Even just not in this patch, there's a lot of new things, so I guess it really warrants an update to that, else that video looks pretty outdated now. We also found your old Google document that has things from, like, the beta cycles were coming up and how simple we thought the class was, mostly because we didn't have any talent choices or options, and now, now that's definitely not, not the case. There were some changes in there that I can't even remember happening. They just feel like that was how it always was. It was like a journey through time. But real quick, before we get into all the nitty gritty, the background footage you'll see will be pertinent to what we're talking about, like different builds. I have footage from myself and footage from Word Up, and we'll be having different different talent builds in the footage. It's not going to tie directly to anything we're talking about, hence a talking head discussion video, but it's just B-roll in the background to watch us do things, and you can... Let us know in the comments down below whose UI you like more, and if the lines make the UI or the simplicity makes the UI, you let us know down below. But real quick, I wanted to give some shout outs to Rusa and Ryeth for all their SimCraft APL optimizations during the last forever. Genji for his assistance with said SimCraft. Hikili for his moral support and the add-on work that he's done with the Enhancement Shaman community. Hothgore for additional brainstorming and feedback during these tumultuous times, and then Purge for existing. Additionally, there's some Discord shoutouts to Hames and all of the Earth Shrine MVPs that have helped us work on stacks and feedback and testing things and getting different iterations down during each of the patch cycles leading up to this point. So thank you all for your assistance. All right then, so all that all said and done. Uh, so what's changed for Enhancement in 725? I'm just gonna... Let you go for it, word up. Talk, talk to me. I mean, the, the first thing that has been asked for a very long time, all day since patch day, is what the best talents are and what the best thing to use is. And I really feel awkward saying it this time because it's been something they've promised but never actually managed to do. But a lot of them really are just balanced and you get to choose. And whilst choice is a little scary, it does mean that now there's no dead talents other than a few specifics. So it's now more a case of what do I not use than what do I use? There are also a lot of talent builds that sort of come online or fit better with different legendary combinations. And whereas in this video, this is not a guide video, Word Up and I hopefully can put together a much more robust visual guide in the coming weeks to a month or so. Once we get everything worked out, we need tier 20, we need legendaries, all this kind of stuff, right? And I guess that the, the baseline of all of this now is our mastery has changed. Stormbringer has been a change, adjusted, reworked, that has a chance to reset your storm strike on all melee abilities. Yeah, the big thing with that is it's not just main hand anymore. This was the most important change that we really tried to feed back on. That the main hand thing really did play into it's either storm strike or you don't do any damage. Tier 19 bonus did a little bit to fix that, but obviously because that was so good, it was so fun to play with. Keeping that in the spec was what we wanted to have them do, which they have done here. And now you're not going to have to farm Nighthold to keep that effect. You've just got that all the time, which really does lend itself to make the spec feel a bit more dynamic. And not to use a buzzword, but you do feel like each global is actually really important. It's not the, oh, this global could be Stormstrike, but it's not. It's this other spell now it's this global may not be storm strike but it's kind of good and it might be storm strike straight after which really does change the feel of the spec which has been really important i think in legion that a lot of people have started to fall off with the rng chains that we ended up having yeah definitely and as of the hotfix even though it was in at the end of the the ptr cycle 
your offhand for storm striking does count. So the, the way to look at this though, really simply, is that if it's a spell that you can cast without the doom hammer equipped, that will not proc Stormbringer. If you need to have the Doom Hammer equipped, that can proc Stormbringer. Additionally, there's one more thing to add in there, just quickly to that, is that Storm Strike Chains, which is something that people have really, really fed back that they love about the spec, are still there, even without the old effect, especially with the new talent that we're going to discuss next, with Tempest being changed. They're still there. They're just a lot more sporadic, but more frequent as opposed to one really big long one that you get all the time and then you never get one again for a while. It's less of a of a constant gamble streak and more of an occasional happy little moment in the rotation. So in 7.2, Stormbringer Storm Strikes added up to three globals. In 7.25, now it's two globals. And like WordUp said, there are still strings you will have, but for the most part, it frees up extra globals over the course of time where the rotation should feel a little more open. And with them baking in the tier 19 two-piece into the reworked Tempest, uh, so it's no longer two charges, that means that every Storm Strike has got that bonus crit chance. So they're always going to be impactful. You really want the Stormbringer effect, but you don't feel like you're being forced into constantly pressing Storm Strike because Stormbringer is active, and you don't feel desperate to get Stormbringer all the time because it's the only thing that deals damage at the moment. So additionally, Boulder Fist was moved down to tier 100. It's just the new easy sort of set and forget passive overall not very good. Purge was quoted as saying, it's not a DPS loss, but overall it's not a talent that you should be looking at, at least right now, for your set and forget. The other two options are way better, which finally, Ascendance is back. It's been heavily changed praise thrall yeah the new ascendance after playing with it today i was already enjoying it on the ptr but with latency from eu it's a little bit more of a of a push to actually make use of it but the new ascendance is really really fun there's just so much to it by having it be more consistent and because of the much reduced wind strike cooldown with it being reduced to roughly every other global cooldown you'll spend on wind strike unless it's a Stormbringer and then you get to back-to-back -back cast it. That means that you now actually do realistically have the option to save it for when you're out of range and you can just chain Wind Strikes into something that you otherwise wouldn't be able to hit. So take Elisan, for example. That's just, it's a fantastic little thing that's in there that makes it much more versatile alongside just being a really, really brutally strong cooldown now, which is fantastic, especially since they've removed that useless maelstrom that they tacked on yeah on the the ranged component of it most of the time we're we'll using ascendance and it's going to be in melee range but i have even on day one of the patch on farm had a moment where that the stars aligned as it were on elisand actually where i had to go soak my bomb and i was like oh i can ascend right here so i got a full bomb soak cool down healed myself made sure i didn't die while still attacking the boss. And that was the first time I felt that way in so long, where it felt so good. Chat room freaked out. They were like, oh, the Ascendance. That felt really, really good. I think the main thing that players now using Ascendance have to understand is that Wind Strike is greater than all else in that window. So the rotation will very much be Wind Strike, something else, Wind Strike, something else. If Windstrike resets, with Stormbringer reset, then it's Windstrike, Windstrike, then something else. It's very, very simple. Don't get it confused or kerfuffled. There's also a little bug that's worth mentioning that we aren't entirely sure is the exact cause. But as a warning, don't make a macro to press Stormstrike and use Ascendance because the suspicion is that if you use them both at the exact same time, it causes a bug in which wind strike doesn't reset and you sit out an entire wind strike cooldown a regular storm strike cooldown even for the entire ascendance which is possibly the most miserable feeling you can actually get in the game yeah, right now it's pretty so bad yeah really don't do it i just i hope that you never run into it but trust me you don't want to so there are some back and forth that was on that that you can bind like you can make a macro to, to put Ascendance and Doom Winds on the same global, even though they're off the global. 
whether you can ascend with your doom winds up and then hit storm strike there's also a back and forth on you would do your opener and then you storm strike and then you doom winds ascendance and then you wind strike that goes back to like mop with like how did you open with storm strike and storm blast back in the day rest in peace that it's very 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 small of a difference just making sure you just don't hit them at the same time is super important. Yeah, if you want to open with Ascendance, the important thing is if you just have a regular Storm Strike ready, you haven't got Stormbringer, you'll Storm Strike, Ascendance, Wind Strike. But if there's any Stormbringers at all, just Ascendance. You'll, the reset doesn't matter. You just want to be able to pour in Wind Strikes because you could end up delaying that Ascendance by five, six, seven seconds if you get a chain. Really not a good idea. Just get into it and start throwing wind strikes out because you know at that point it's going to be a gamble as to whether you can even get storm strike on cooldown to capitalize on the reset. Additionally, down there in the 100 tier now, Earth and Spike is totally fine. Who'd have thunk? Once they buff the actual on hit damage to the high heavens, which regrettably it still does physical damage, so it will reduce by armor, but the 30% sort of judgment or cs window that we now can take use of is very impactful for physical and nature damage it does of course synergize with overcharge but that's again as we start beginning of this whole talent section out different talents and different legendary work really well together but that's for a guide video not for this yep and it's really not that hard to fit into a rotation even even with it costing maelstrom now it's just an easy fit it in there Maybe get some storm strikes, get a nice little window, or check out an overcharge, hit them like a truck for a good two or three million, and keep on going, which is really, really fun. Hailstorm received a slight buff, but that was just to keep it in line with the current tier of things. That talent, if we had like a timeline of seeing how many times it's been buffed and nerfed, it would be an absolutely just complete clown fiesta. And then of course, Windsong had a like a 5% attack speed nerf. That's just to balance out tier 15 because they put Landslide up in tier 15, which is our passive agility buff when you use Rockbiter, which is fine. We have a active cooldown. We have a rotational proc and a passive buff with Hot Hand being in the mix. Hot Hand did have an RPPM cut down, but that again is just to, to even out the power in tier 15. And outside of Windsong still feeling not great to use mathematically it's not terrible right now it's just not as worked into the, the other talent and, and legendary builds you can work in yeah that talent tier just is fine that one is probably one of the ones that you can just pick the one you like or the one that works the best with the legendaries that you like it's purely up to you and you aren't making a bad choice anymore so what is what is all of that mean for gameplay. We went over Stormbringer, whatever the talent things, and the spec feels the same until you really shift around talents based on talents and legendary combinations. The 7.2 version was Stormstrike ran in chains. That can happen a little bit in 7.2.5, but it should be, uh, again, more smooth that you can react to that one extra global now and then sort of go about your business. Yeah, the big big effect i think at the moment when you actually are playing it is instead of it feeling like you'll occasionally have a flood of oh my god i've got all these things to press i've got like hot hand i've got got storm strike i mean and i need to do my buffs and, and i need to do doom winds and i get my wolves up as well instead now you can be like well i've got storm strike or hot hand and i press which one and then i press overcharge or stormbringer those are it's usually a one or the other and as opposed to everything at once but then occasionally nothing at all you've always got something that feels impactful and that's a really really different feeling to how it was pre-patch so it's a bit more hectic in a sense where all the time you've got something to press but it's a lot less miserable when you haven't got anything to press yeah the miserable moments are fewer and farther between due to the fact that even if you are some people liked the Rockbiter playstyle when you just spam Rockbiter all the time when you had nothing to do. And now with the new Rockbiter, how it basically acts like old Boulder Fist with a charge system, that it's still like when you hit that Rockbiter one or two charges at a time, that could just give you the Stormbringer and then you're back to the Stormbringer and then you've got a Lava Lash to throw off because you probably have enough Maelstrom to do that now. Or you've got an ES to put back up and an Overcharge to throw out there. 
per fight talent changes will also be a lot more impactful because of this, because you'll have, sorry, lightning shield. You're still like a leveling or PVP talent. You're still terrible. I'm so sorry. Not really. You have AS versus Hailstorm. You have ES versus Ascendance. You have Hot Hand versus Landslide. You have Crashing Storm and Fury of Air and Sundering, which math aside, they all really work. And then you have Tempest, Overcharge, and Empowered Stormlash, which Empowered Stormlash and Overcharge with like the new Legendary Ring, for example, they don't have a huge gap. It's fine. It would have been terrible if they left Empowered Stormlash nerfed, but they reverted that, thankfully. Yeah, with Empowered Stormlash in particular, the big effect is that if you're looking at it in Sims, it's slightly undervalued for a few reasons. Um, I'm not going to go into it exactly all because it would take way too much time. But it does do slightly more than that, and it is an exclusively group talent as well. So it it's used less because of that, because not a lot of people would experience it. But it is still a perfectly viable talent. It's also, unlike Overcharge, virtually impossible to mess up with. It's just completely passive. It's just going to do its thing, and that's that. Which, in some cases, can actually be really important, because Overcharge, you can make a mistake with and you can overcommit to it or you can use it at the wrong time or you can not use it on cooldown on that tier it's free for all which one you like or which legendaries you're using maelstrom overall feels like a resource that finally is built and spent now i think there's very little times in the last day and a half or so where i mean i've done mythic farm i've done mythic plus i've done world quests that i felt that I just sat on so much Maelstrom with just like, I'm hitting Lava Lash, I guess, four times right now. So Feral Spirits, their Maelstrom they generate is very useful. Like, it feels great when it comes up in the rotation, on the opener. Convergence of Fate as a trinket right now, if any of you are holding on to that, it does rise in overall value because of this as well. When you get Wolves, you actually can use that Maelstrom. You're not looking at a full 150 Maelstrom bar that you just can't spend because you give all those free Stormbringer procs that chain together that are only costing 20 Maelstrom, but because of how Wind Strikes was, you were attacking so fast, you built up enough Maelstrom to cover that 20, and you never moved your bar. Yeah, Maelstrom's just a tangible resource now, which probably for the first time since we were using Overcharged Fury of Air at the beginning of Nighthold, is a legitimate factor now. It's something that makes a resource a resource, which we haven't really had might seem a little bit intimidating at first, but it really is just as simple as you just need to watch the bar a little bit and press the right buttons and you get used to it very quickly. So we have two new legendaries coming in patch 725, which are lovingly referred to as the Heart and Soul. So Soul the Farseer, which is our new ring, and the Smoldering Heart, which are the gloves. And those of you out there that be wondering, are the new legendary items worth it? And to quote Purge, yes, topic covered. So, uh, so next, I guess, so move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, Soul of Farseer grants Tempest. So you basically get to pick Overcharge or Empower Stormlash, and uh, neither option is bad. So just pick whatever one you like to play with better. And more importantly, neither of them clash with Tempest. And they also allow for a little more flexibility in what other talents you use, because obviously Overcharge makes you more into physical, which makes Earth and Spike more appealing. So... It's actually a really clever choice for the tier that you get a talent from. And the Smoldering Heart, Maelstrom spent equals a chance to ascend. So the actual reading is that you have a 0.12% chance per Maelstrom spent to gain ascendance for 10 seconds. Roughly a 1.1-ish procs per minute. Over, we did like 10,000 iterations in a stack. So it's roughly about a little over one proc a minute. 20% uptime if you want to look at it that way. And this is to notice by ascending it, it does literally trigger the exact same effect that your Ascendance talent would do. And since Ascendance is already a good talent, this Legendary is just good. You'll get more Ascendance uptime from wearing this than you would from even picking the talent. It's just a little bit less predictable. But that's completely irrelevant when the effect is so impactful that you're going to get 10 seconds of doing a massive streak of damage. And then you've got the real high rolls where it could say proc when you're out of range. It could proc during Earth and Spike, if you've got that instead. All of those things fall together that make this Legendary really, really, really good all the time. There's just no downside to it. The only minor thing to keep in note here with Ascendance is that if your gloves proc during Ascendance, the talent, it will give you 10 seconds. But if your gloves are already proc'd, 
and your ascendance comes off cooldown, do not ascend until your gloves proc wears off. So if you're in ascendance, you can gain up to 10 more seconds or 20 or 30, however the RNG falls in your favor. But if the glove proc is active, just don't ascend until it's over. Yeah, that's because it's going to set it to exactly 15 seconds. It won't add 15, it will set it to 15. You'll waste your actual ascendance. So the legendary combinations, like what to wear, when and why, very much a guide topic. And we'll have some things posted in the Earth Shrine Discord, of course, but there there are a lot up there. Like there, there are combinations that you can put together. Just don't wear the boots. Or the belt, and you're okay. Yep, yeah, that's that's all. I mean, there's obviously ones that are strong on their own. So you've got the head, uh, the braces. The braces work well with eye. Eye works well with the gloves. And then you've got the chest for AOE. You've got the trinket, which is just a really good stat stick. There's just so many things in there. They're all just good legendaries. It's no longer what is the best one. It's which one suits this fight best or which one do i like the best or which one suits the talents that i want to play on this fight so you just need to take a moment and think what's best for me on that rather than what is the best overall because the difference is really small between a lot of those combinations and then this comes up sometimes in passing so a small note on secondary stats it's still basically that haste is greater than or equal to mastery which is greater than verse which is greater than crit that's just sort of the roadmap that we have here the only feel good point i'm not going to use that crazy cap word is shooting for above 25 percent haste is recommended for multiple reasons, just we'll leave it at that. Yeah, the the multiple reasons are basically involving things like Doom Wins or Unleash Doom, those kind of things where you just fit in an extra global here or there. But it's not a hard, if you don't have it, you're going to do terrible damage. It's just a little bit of an extra bump that sometimes make haste look really, really good. That's all it is. And despite the fact that I said something very stupid in the initial discussion for this video, I have been told that I have to say it. Yes, and it's you that, do. Um, if you look at stats, haste is like the driver and master is the car. So you need something to really be driving the spec and then you need something in the spec to move it forward. And that's what it sort of operates as. So you need to combine them both in tandem rather than going all in on one and leaving the other in the dust. I'm sure your face will not get photoshopped into one of those motivational posters in a car on a serene sunset over the salt flats with that one little quote below it. I'm sure that will not happen. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Definitely will Excuse now. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. I. <clears throat> what? What'd you say? Oh, nothing, nothing. Alrighty then. With all that said, how is enhancement looking in patch 7.2.5? And to quote Purge again, better than 7.2? He's a man of very few words. Yeah, the spec is just ground up it's designed better it plays better there's more options it's more versatile it seems like it's had a lot more dare say attention to the really specific details that came out in legion that we weren't expecting to manifest this late on and so if you're worried that the spec is was bad then that's not really relevant anymore right now the consensus is it is a lot more fun and it's a lot more consistent which is the big buzzwords that's always surrounded us and if we're more consistent, then we definitely are more fun. Currently, we're looking at, and this is just information from like one and a half nights of 725, recording this right on the, the cusp of the uh, the patch dropping. There are many enhancement shamans on many fights right now in Mythic Nighthold across different percentiles with very different builds and legendary layouts that are all doing very comparable. There's not like one talent setup and one legendary setup populating hundreds of ranks. They're very, very intermixed right now. The melee landscape that's coming up in tier 20, like how is that gonna work out? We have no idea. It'll take weeks to figure that out and get like an actual staircase to see where things line up. Yep, you can just go down that list. And if you remember the 7-2 landscape, you just have everyone using Boulder Fist variants with the occasional person here or there using a hot hand variant especially in single target they, they climb up a lot but right now you can see so many different legendaries on their different talents there's some talents that i've seen on there that i have literally never seen so i mean that is the biggest indicator that they've done a good job 
fixing some of the real, real long-standing problems that we had. There's some wrap-up mentions here that your tier 20 on the horizon here, your Tomb of Sargeras tier, which is very Crash Lightning focused. The basic 5% crit we get on the two-piece is just like a numerical thing. The stacking bonus on Crash Lightning on the four-piece scales very well with targets. It's not a useless bonus, and the overall priority doesn't really change greatly. There may be some things we figure out in the future with Earth and Spike and certain talent layouts that really work the best with it, but it just, you get stacks and you hit Crash Lightning. Yeah, it basically just gives you another little maintenance buff with Crash Lightning, and the four-piece makes it less of a loss to cast that Crash Lightning, and it gives you an extra little fringe possibility that you could occasionally just have a wave of ads spawn and hit them all for three million straight away with a big stack of Crash Lightning and then carry on with your day, which... I mean, it's not the most crazy set bonus out there, but it's it's just it's just fine. I'm completely fine with the bonus now, where it sits compared to where it sat originally. And then tier 19 and tier 20 tomfoolery that's always out there. Are we wearing two piece, two piece, four piece, two piece, two piece? You know, four piece, two piece, blah 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 blah. blah eye level aside and war forging and nonsense. Blah. Overall, tier 19 and 725 is no longer to be held over into tier 20. The two piece is not. It's fine, but it's not worth holding on to it. Use it as you transition, but don't hold back pieces of tier 19 to not take tier 20. Yeah, more importantly, the two-piece, four-piece combination that a lot of classes are hyping up excludes quite a lot of really good legendary options that you are going to want to be able to use. You can't use the chest, the head, or the gloves, which arguably are the three biggest high rollers of the legendary combinations you can use. So if you don't have access to those for a quite meager two-piece bonus, alongside the fact that you can just go and get a Court of Stars Arcway bonus to fill in the gaps, that kind of just kills the two-piece, four-piece dream dead. Yep, so that was that's basically everything we had to go back and forth on. I don't think there's anything else that we need to mention as we, we wrap this up. Word, are you, uh... <sighs> I think we're good, yeah? Good? I really hope that covers everything. <laughs> if it doesn't, then you can... Just attack us in the comments, I suppose, and, and we'll go from there. But I think that should cover everything. We should hopefully have a much more nitty-gritty guide video sometime in the patch 7.2.5 cycle, once we both get some more some more work done under the hood and figure things out and actually have things on live to test out. Again, my name is Bay. Thank you very much for listening. And this other guy's name was... It was Wordup. Are you sure? Is that actually your name? I don't... I, th I thought it's your name. It's the only name that people know me by. I thought it was Senpai. Is that is that a thing? Only to you, dear.